What's up guys, Penguin Overlord here, and welcome back to Ghost Recon Breakpoint. In today's video, I'm going to give my review of the Coblin Assault Rifle, which you get from defeating Titan Omega, otherwise known as Gargoyle, in Ghost Recon Breakpoint's raid, Operation, uh, no, sorry, Project Titan. Got that a little bit confused with the special operations in Wildlands, so sorry about that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, of course, as always, I am reviewing a 250 gear score weapon uh, with a 251 uh, overall gear score. Just that way, um, everything's on par and we can actually see how the weapon performs against comparable um, enemies on the main island of Aurora, which are stuck on uh, 250 gear score. Anyway, so for this review, there's just three things I want to concentrate on for the Coblin in particular. Obviously, it's signature ability. Uh, the damage and the um, site, the uh, attachments, or rather lack of attachments on this weapon. Now, first off, let's go to the ability. So, obviously, the signature ability for the Coblin is that it does 15% damage to drones. And since since this is a signature weapon, you will always get this bonus. One of the more annoying things about Ghost Recon Breakpoint is if you want to have a specific perk with your weapon, like say, if I could scroll down to. Uh, one of my LMGs that I used during the raid. Yeah, this one. Like, say if you want a 12% uh, damage to drones perk, you always have to, like, either find it randomly in the world, or um, you'll have to keep buying it from a Maria's shop it, with the blueprints. Uh, so it just takes forever to get whatever perk you want. So if you're looking for a specific damage to drones weapon, this would be a good choice, because uh, you you'll always get that 50% damage to drones. It's really best used for the various flying drones in the game, some of the smaller ground drones, but not really the behemoth drones. This will do, of course, this will wipe out the flying drones pretty quickly, and the uh, ground drones takes a little bit, maybe like a magazine or two to kill them, but it takes them down fairly easily. But it takes way too long uh, for this weapon to kill behemoth drones because you are stuck with a 30 round magazine capacity so you'll have to keep reloading and it just adds more time to kill the behemoth drones and you have to maneuver around as it starts shooting rockets at you and LMG is obviously going to be a much better choice uh, against the behemoth drone because you can just keep firing and if you have some of the higher gear score LMGs from the raid you can kill a behemoth in seconds so it, this really isn't a good choice even at a uh, even if you get a higher gear score version it's still not a good choice to take on the behemoth drone now next up we've got the damage it's at 32 damage uh, for this assault rifle which is pretty good for all considering all the other assault rifles in the game and also, it does. This is basically um, this is basically assault variant, a range of damage at Mark III, and it has less recoil than the various assault um, variants in the game. Even with just a suppressor attached to it, it will still have less recoil than the assault variants with competitors and stuff like that on them. So that's not bad. The only thing is, just playing the game, I don't really notice much damage differences between the assault rifles. It's just not something I really noticed because pretty much most of the time I'm playing on full auto. I did get some uh, semi-auto shots in though, and I did notice that um, on normal Sentinel guys, it can take like around three to five shots to kill them, and on the Wolves, it'll take like five to seven or so, uh, depending on where you hit them. Of course, obviously a headshot's a headshot, and they'll insta kill anything. Well, mostly I think the heavies will obviously take two shots, but that's not the point. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is here is that I don't really care so much about damage on assault rifles in this game because it doesn't really seem to make that huge of an impact. What seems to matter more in regards to damage is gear scores. So let's say if you equip um, a higher level Coblin like this one right here, which is 292, that's going to do more damage than the 251 because of gear score. So there's that. Now, finally, the last thing I want to talk about is the attachments on this assault rifle you don't get a whole lot of choices unfortunately you really lack a bunch of customization so with the muzzle devices you've got the standard muzzle and the suppressor so no compensators or flash hiders or muzzle brakes none of that you're just kind of stuck with that rail attachments you've got all the normal assault rifle attachments the at peel the mall the pec 15 the rangefinder i use the mall i think that's just one of the the best all-around assault rifle attachment in the game and you would have to go have have excuse me you'd have to have a very specific reason why you'd go with anything else 
in the game besides the ball. And the scope, uh, the comp and for most of the, well, some of the assault rifle sites in the game. You've got the comp and for digital site, EXPS, EXP3 and G33 site. I always mispronounce that. <laughs> uh, the, e, the EXPS3 and iron sites, this crappy Chinese red dot for some reason that Ubisoft puts in all their games. But yeah, you don't have any underbell attachments, unfortunately, because this under here is actually, I did some research, it's actually a Magpul um, hand stop kit um, right here, so it, you obviously can't really attach anything under the barrel, just Ubisoft decide it this way, so that's kind of what you have to consider if you're going to use this weapon. You, you're going to really miss out on a bunch of customization, especially if you like using the grenade launcher in the game, which I do, even though it's kind of a more limited weapon. It's not as good against some of the drones, but you are going to miss out on some of the customization in this game if you decide to use the Coblin. So you're just going to have to weigh, honestly, whether the higher damage and the extra damage to drones is really worth giving up all this customization that you can get with some of the other assault rifles in this game. Like, for instance, just picking one out at random, the M4A1 Assault or the... Tavor Assault, you've obviously got more choices with that, so that's something you have to keep in mind. Personally, I like messing with the Coblin, but it's not going to be one of my go-to weapons, because honestly, just, you know, this is just kind of a situational sort of weapon for me, and um, it's not going to be one of my go-tos, because I just lack so much versatility. But that's my opinion. I'll still mess around with it from time to time, but uh, and it's a fairly effective weapon, it's just it's just not one of my favorites, but it does perform solidly, so there you guys go. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it for this review of the Coblin. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Pegwood Overlord, Now I'll catch you all next time. Take care, guys.